So interesting. Uh, also bullish TDP on BTC, TD9. So uh, TRVL. If people aren't familiar, then uh, I've been I follow I do TRVL on a regular basis. All right. So I've been having this uh, conversation with one of my friends. He's saying he he's he's feeling extremely bearish on TRVL. Yeah. He's a cyclical position trader. Yesterday we have a really heated conversation at midnight on the phone. Yeah. And this is how the conversation went down. So basically he's looking at uh, the candle structure. Yeah. Let me get rid of this. Uh, so I just want to kind of bring you in onto this conversation and see what you guys think, because maybe I'm wrong yeah he's looking at the weekly time frame so he's quite a higher time frame trader he's looking at this week weekly time frame he's saying that this last week this weekly red candle was extremely bearish yeah he finds it extremely bearish and therefore he and also the other thing that he was looking at was this kind of weekly trend line which was broken so it's not easy to see something like that broken back tested and then down so i'm having a conversation with him about trvl and i'm saying uh, and this is what i think yeah i think that this green doji a bullish candle was bearish it was bearish because it closed underneath this previous week high and this previous previous week high it was bearish because it took the liquidity from the highs and it closed lower. So if the bulls were in control, it should have closed higher. It should have been more bullish. If it was a bullish candle. It should have had a bullish close and it closed bearish. Okay. It was followed by a bearish weekly candle. And the reason why this was bearish was because it reversed that previous week and it closed lower than the previous week low. It went all the way down and it closed lower. That was a, that was a bearish reversal. Okay, on the weekly time frame, that bearish candle was followed by another extremely bearish candle. The price went up, took the liquidity from the weekly high. <coughs> Sorry, that weekly new weekly level, and was sold right down all the way down to five point three cents. Extremely bearish candle. It was followed by this bullish candle, which which was actually bearish. Why is that bullish candle bearish? because uh, that was the bull's attempt to reverse the previous week. And in effect, they weren't able to do that. You had a bearish reaction at the top of that candle. You see, that's a selling tail, that's a bearish reaction. And so if the bulls were in control, uh, they would have closed higher. They would have reversed it and closed higher to reverse the previous week's price action. And as high as possible, really, when bulls are in control, uh, their aim is to close higher. When bears are in their control, their aim is to close lower. That's that's the idea, okay? And this red weekly candle this last week is a bearish candle because it's red, but in my mind, it's bullish. And this is the this is the argument we've been having, right? He thinks it's bearish. I think it's bullish. The reason why I think it's bullish, and I'm giving him reasons, is it's a bearish candle, so bears are in control. Yeah. It's a high volume candle. You see the volume is a high volume. It's the most volume in all of these candles. That's the most volume. It was last week. Yeah. So if the bears are in control and the volume was increasing volume, why did it not close lower than the previous week open? Yeah. Why did it close higher? It closed there. Increasing volume. Bears are in control. We've had multiple weeks of bearishness why is that candle not closing lower than the previous week yeah it didn't even take the liquidity from the previous week yeah and it closed higher than the previous week open yeah so you would expect if it was if the bears were in control with increasing volume you'd expect the bears to similar to this candle here where the bears were able to close underneath the weekly previous weekly low why would the bears not do exactly the same thing yeah 
So I'm telling him, despite what people think, this candle is actually a bullish candle. It's red. It's a pretty miserable candle. It looks very bearish. I'm saying it's bullish. We're having a disagreement on this. And now everything is down to this week, right? So he's extremely bearish. He won't buy any more TRVL. I'm extremely bullish. I'm buying a shitload of TRVL, okay? And basically the jury is out. What happens to this weekly candle, whether this is bullish or bearish, okay? I think last week was bullish, even though it looks bearish. And I want to see what happens this week because that's going to be the proof of the pudding is going to be in the in whatever what happens next he thinks that he thinks we're going to three cents that's what he thinks he thinks this whole thing is extremely bearish he's uh, he's looking at this uh inverse head and shoulders and also he's telling me that we're in a downtrend and i'm saying we're not in a downtrend we're in an uptrend he's saying no we're in a downtrend because we haven't been able to take out the high there We've put in a lower high and we're going down. That's what he's saying. He's saying we're in a downtrend. I'm saying we're not in a downtrend because the trend has changed. You can't look at the weekly time frame and say we're in a downtrend when on the daily time frame, yeah, we're still uptrend. Yeah. And so we've been in an uptrend for a while now. We've been in an uptrend ever since we confirmed a higher high here. That was from the 28th of December. We've been in an uptrend. And ever since the 28th of December, we've been putting in higher lows and higher highs. And actually, the higher, the, the highest higher low or the lowest or the higher highest low, the higher low to beat is this one here. Yeah, because you go from a higher low uh, all the way through to a higher high. Naturally, unless we the price comes down and takes out that low, we're still higher low. We're still higher low. Everything in between is just range bound consolidation between the range high here and the range low here. Okay, so I'm telling him last week wasn't bearish, it was actually bullish, and we're holding a higher low on the daily time frame. So our bullish market structure is still intact. At the very least, to get bearish, I'd like to see the daily market structure to become bullish, bearish again. OK, if I suddenly see the daily market structure change to bearish, I think then I could agree with him and say now it's starting to look bearish again. OK, and maybe the weekly time frame trend will continue, will be a, that maybe that is a lower high. But, you know, if that's a lower high, you, the next target for the price would be a lower low. You'd ex That's what you're expecting, aren't you? If you put in a lower high on the weekly time frame, if that was the the lower high this is the lower low that's the lower high now the destination is guess what all the way down uh, at 1.9 cents yeah that would be a continuation of this bearish downtrend lower highs lower lows i think first i need to see that the daily time frame market structure changes to bearish i can't see that yet and this is we're having a really heated d debate about this whole conversation this whole conversation is heated Obviously, I want to be right, uh, but also I don't want to be right. I want to be correct. I want to be accurate. I want to be right. I don't know, just want to be right. I want to be accurate because I want I want to give people the, the most accurate information about the charts. It looks bearish, but we haven't put in a higher uh, lower low yet. So what does that mean? It means we're still there's still demand here. Yeah, it's they're still buying. Yeah, now. To be fair, the more you test a level, the weaker it becomes. Yeah. And if we go up now and come back down and test it and test it and test it, I think eventually it will break. I do. I do think that that's extremely probable. If we keep on testing this level, yeah, this level isn't going to hold the support forever. It's just the reality of the way support and resistance levels act when the price keeps on coming back to test the level it will eventually break yeah what we need is an explosion from this level that's what we need we need an explosive move off this level and then we need to take out that high and this whole thing changes again the whole thing the whole sh this whole in the invalidated head and shoulders a higher high 
uh, this is continuation of bullish market structure this whole thing in my mind is bullish uh, it's just that Bitcoin is seeing a little bit of weakness and the market is reacting to Bitcoin even though I think there's I'm seeing a lot of higher time frame absorption I'm having a little bit of a an argument with my friends and what I'm seeing is that um, we've clearly lost a trend line like I'm not denying that I that the fact that we lost this trend line here somewhere there it's a bit of a messy trend line we lost it okay and now we've come to this lower trend line and I don't really want to lose that trend line now I really don't if we lose that trend line this actually looks like a bump and run reversal to the downside that's what it looks like uh, this is your lead again it's a, you see this a lot this to this idea this lead in this is the bump this is the bump you lose the bump line if you lose that then that's your bump and run to the downside that becomes really bearish this is a this becomes a bearish reversal if that's what happens i don't like this idea at all because i i want i think we're at a really uh strong level of support not not because of this arbitrary trend line that doesn't really matter yeah trend lines are so subjective i'm not really bothered about trend lines so much i'm more interested in horizontal higher time frame fib levels and i've i've done this exercise many times if you go from the all time high which is about 1.56 to the all time low yeah you'll see that we have this 236 a higher time frame fib level and you can clearly see in the past it was acting as support and resistance and now it's it's price has come back to test it as support and effectively on the three day time frame this is another test it's like a third test what's interesting is we're getting this higher time frame test on this arbitrary trend line that I've drawn between these, these two pivots. And what's interesting is that if you take a retracement from this low here to this high here, uh, not that one, sorry, which one was it? From this high here to this low here, you also have uh, the 50% mark from this pivot high here to this low here. You have the 50% mark, which is the midpoint of this overall range. So that coincides with the 236. So we have two higher time frame horizontal levels plus a trend line. And on other on other exchanges, if you do a volume range pool, mainly MEX, I think it is. MEX is the main one. So if you go to MEX and have a look at the volume, what you'll see is that we're also kind of into the value area high of MEX. So in terms of volume, that should act as support. It's different and um, it's different on different exchanges. And so I can't that's maybe that's part of the problem. There's a little bit of divergence between the way the volume has been put in on the exchanges. So you see here on gate, it's a different volume profile um, because of historic buying and selling here on KuCoin. Um, you also have a different volume profile and you see the volume value area high is slightly higher and on bybit which is the one that i've been which i which i use i use all of them but i like bybit the most um you can see what's happened is that we've actually put in a point the point of control has moved from this lower number at about 33.1 cents to 6.1 cents yeah so there's been a lot of trading at this price it looks like we've lost it it looks like we've lost it but uh i want to see a, i haven't seen an, an effective test of that level yet to know that that it to confirm like it looks like it has because you see this three-day candle it's kind of holding it as a back test um but what i would like to see if is more of a t like a more of a back test like more of a price comes back to that level to test to see if people are looking to sell that level now like if it's that's what you want to see you want to see the price to come back to a level if it's a lost level let's say that point of control is a lost level yeah i'd be interested to see if we do get now a push up 
if that if people sell into that and if that holds as resistance yeah i'd like to see if that happens okay if that happens then you're basically flipping a higher time frame volume level into resistance and potentially this 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 becomes extremely bearish what we really need to do is we need to go right back above that level and flip it back into support and start making higher ground and start pushing the highs again that's what the bulls need to do and this is it's ultimately it's a battle between bullishness and bearishness it's a it's a it's a battle of sentiment if people are feeling bearish on the overall market on bitcoin they're going to panic they're going to worry about their altcoins and they're going to think that their altcoins are going to go down they're going to lose value that's how they perceive this whole thing and they're going to start selling at whatever price and the every time it pumps they're going to sell into that and if you're higher time frame bullish uh you're not going to allow that to happen because as a bull i want a bullish chart and i think people have to understand how important this is to the way to the rest of the crypto market yeah i'm not just analyzing this chart i'm i'm doing a daily updates and i'm doing daily analysis on this chart because I want to destroy Airbnb. <laughs> I want to take down Airbnb and I want to I think the best chance of doing that is for this project to succeed. And the this project can succeed if the the whole of the crypto crowd, the whole of the crypto community gets behind D Travel, which is a decentralized autonomous organization which is which is fair. It's a fair organization where everyone can participate and we can all participate in the success of D-Travel and the future success of taking down Airbnb. I think this is the one. And so therefore, as a bull, which I am, I'm a, I'm a bull on this project. It doesn't matter how low the price goes. I'm still bullish um, because of all the different information I've shared in the past. Um, we have to have a bullish chart. We need a bullish chart. We need bullish market structure. We need to take out the highs and we need to hold higher lows and we need to continue this bullishness yeah so as a bull it's 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 in all of our vested interest to continue the bullishness of this chart yeah so even though people might be thinking to themselves oh wouldn't it be great if i could pick up some of this token at two cents or three cents wouldn't that be great people are thinking like that no it wouldn't be great it's not great you don't want to go down <laughs> We don't want to go down. That doesn't look great. It looks bearish. Yeah, you have to understand that. If you're a bull, buying now and holding support looks great. And then going up and taking out that high and breaking out of this inverse head and shoulders, right? would look great that's what looks great because then what happens is the whole of crypto sees what's happening they see the bullishness of the behavior of the price and the chart they see that support levels are being held they see that we're getting higher lows they see that there's more demand than supply yeah they see increasing volume so they see that people are selling but the price is still going up the stock price is still making higher highs and higher lows and then they start to buy the dips and they start to buy the dips and we start to get increased prices and then the more the price goes up the more bullish become and the more people pile in and then the more exchanges that are going to list trvl and then the more uh the better the chance we have of uh getting onto the tier one okx coinbase and and uh binance and the team have been in conversation with them and the only thing we really need to do now is just to keep on doing what we're doing increasing the volume which is what's happening there's been a 500 percent increase in volume over the last eight months we just need to con continue that idea and also we need to con continue spreading the word i'm literally telling everyone about d travel and how we're going to take down airbnb and how this is going to change the game forever um, because once you take down Airbnb, once D Travel takes down Airbnb, and once D Travel becomes more bigger than Airbnb and more popular than Airbnb and more used than Airbnb, then that's the first giant to be taken down. And I tell you, all of these Web two giants could be taken down in the future by Web three DAOs. You know, and so 
this is the beginning of a movement effectively and we're right at the beginning so i, I think uh, i think we can create that idea i agree uh Nirati is saying you need to have futures listings for volume by you need to pay so i've been having conversations um with um the travel and i think the biggest hindrance now is our volume okay so that's changing but it, it's it's taking a little bit of time and we just have to continue doing what we're doing if people are trading trade more if people are buying and selling buy and sell more uh have your bots running let the bots rebalancing bots are good you it, it just adds volume and it doesn't really you don't have a negative effect because you don't lose anything if you have a rebalancing bot between trvl and a couple of other tokens you're at you're increasing the volume and you don't lose anything everyone can add to that um when i'm looking at the historical data on the volume um let me show you so you see we get like the last 24 hours we've got three hundred nine thousand dollars of volume 324 289 220 that's pretty good huh? we've gone up in volume you see we're doing consistent 300s uh we've peaked at 600 here let me just go to more data. Where's more data? Let me go to the year. Um, where is it? See that? 2 million, 1 million, 2 million. We've had days of high volume, 500,000. Okay. And historically, when you go back in time, so if I go back, a lot of people weren't involved back in the, in, in the old days. So it's not long ago um but back in september back in august you see the volume was down at 23000 92000 57 30 30 if we go back in time there was low day volumes yeah if we go back exactly a year now so if i just scroll uh all the way back uh for one year so what are we in now may may the 3rd look at this we were ha we had 72 52 52 58 yeah so basically let's say on average that's about sixty thousand or so and just this last week we're up at about three hundred thousand so we're talking about what 5x we had a 5x increase in volume over the last year and when you look at the market cap now we're roughly averaging at about 18 to 17 18 million and exactly one year ago we were about four million or so four million five million four million yeah so we've had a 5x in volume and we've had less than the 5x in market cap increase. So actually the volume is slightly is increasing much quicker, slightly quicker than the market cap. And what we need to do is increase this volume. So if we can get that volume above a million um, and may, may, mainly it's by word of mouth, telling people, spreading the news, uh, getting people interested in TRVL uh twitter is a good place to do that um a lot of people don't understand what trv trv is yet and so i'm having another conference so i've done a nice thread uh, about why trvl is bullish and why i think people uh should get involved uh here i even put my even put my bookings data you know 18 completed bookings that almost that 38,000 realized earnings, real value. This is real world value that's come into my pocket. Okay. Through D travel. So this is, this is, it's not, we're not joking here when I talk about the ability for D travel to destroy Airbnb. This is, this is real and we can do it and we just need to spread the word. I'm getting everyone interested in TRVR and we could, uh, we could do that. Nirati is asking about Etherscan. Good morning, Cactus Kate. Range four to six months. I kind of agree with you. Um, only 65% of the population use crypto. Use crypto. Shushan, hi. Long time, yeah. Um, have you ever thought about how all the exchanges have almost the same prices? Are they all sharing the same data? Well, you you have bright you have bots that buy and sell arbitrage. Um, let's have a look at the holders. Etherscan. But you have to look at Etherscan and you have to look at Binance as well. BSC Explorer. 
because you're going to have holders on Etherscan, you're going to have holders on Binance. Um, I'm not sure. I need to find the address. How do I do that? It's over here somewhere. There's the contract. That's the Ethereum contract. Can you see it? I don't see it. Token tracker. Is it that one? Holders. 242,000. Okay. So it's not that much, unfortunately. Um, let's have a look at um, Binance. do this there it is that's the Binance one let's have a look at Binance Seven thousand one hundred and eight uh, eighty nine. So, I think you add that to that. That's about nine thousand five hundred holders. Uh, then you have Polygon as well. Um, I can't see Polygon here. Let me just have a look. Um, Polygon TRVL contract address. Or is that ETH? I don't know. Will that be the same as ETH? Let's have a look at this. This is shit, TNT. <laughs> um, let's have a look at that. Let's have a look. Search not found. Probably the same as ERC20, huh? Um, probably. Which one is that one? It's probably the same, isn't it? Mm. Can't tell. That doesn't include sex holders, uh, central exchange holders. I don't know. I don't think so. I don't know. Also, the other thing is that uh, right now on D-Travel, they're building the ability for people to buy TRVL on their website. So at the moment, you see, when you click on buy, uh, you can exchange from the Binance Smart Chain to ETH. So they've got an exchange uh, a swap here. Um, you can't do it from... So you can't do it from ETH to Binance, but you can do it from Binance to ETH, right? And, and in the future, I don't know exactly when, um, we're going to have the ability to also buy TRVL on their website. And also, right now, if you don't have, uh, if you don't have a, um, a MetaMask or a wallet, when you log in, you can actually, it's, it's called Wallet as a Service. So I, I have it. So... I can't show you because I have a MetaMask. It's linked to my MetaMask. I could show you actually, but I have to find I have to find the beta link. Let me see if I can quickly do that. Because if I show you, then you'll see what I mean. I just have to find a bit. I was um I was given a bit beta link and I lost it. And if I can find that, I can quickly show you. And give me a second. If my web if my WhatsApp loads, which is not loading right now. Um, yeah, because normally if you don't have a MetaMask, you can just connect with your email and then your D-Travel will create a wallet for you, which is hosted by them. It's called Wallet as a Service. And so effectively what that means is that every host and every traveler will have a wallet hosted by D-Travel. Okay. 
uh, I can't show you because I, I my my web my WhatsApp isn't loading, so that's fine. And so we could have a lot of holders because effect effectively every traveler and every host will be a wallet holder. They don't need a MetaMask. They can just log on with their email, and D Travel will create a wallet for them, a hosted wallet, hosted by D Travel, accessible by their email address with a, some kind of two-factor authentication. So. If what I'm saying is that um, we just need to get the word out right now. And I, fi I think the great thing about uh, D-Travel -tra is, 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 a, is it's, it's still a hidden gem. And I've, I've been having another conversation with another friend. And let me just read, it, read out to you uh, his sentiment. Okay. And I kind of want to prove him wrong. <laughs> Uh, he's saying the attention for TRVL isn't there. <coughs> he said, be careful building pers building a personal thesis. It will ruin your trading performance. He says it's much better trading things that are actually being traded, right? And it's not a personal kind of quest of mine to make this good. I think it is good. Yeah, I've seen it. I've seen the results and I've seen the impact on my real world business. And <coughs> everything that I wrote is based on personal experience. And I think it is good. I think everything here was as correct as I could share it. And it's just a matter of time. But effectively, what I want to happen is I want the, the rest of crypto to see what's happening. It's really annoying for me because when I see these kind of shit scams, this soul travel suddenly pop out out of nowhere. Uh, use the TRVL um, ticker and then you see on their freaking tweets they're getting so much likes and retweets and comments you know all of these kind of this soul shit this soul crowd and and these guys have literally got nothing literally got nothing and they want to basically pump this token up to the moon based on zero based on absolutely nothing and they probably will and it's and it's it, i think that's quite annoying because none of these people that are retweeting this are smart enough to even go into coin market cap or whatever and do a little bit of research on trvl and to see what trvl really is yeah there's a lot of dumb people out there it wouldn't be hard to bring all of these people on board honestly it wouldn't be difficult if they came to realize that this is actually the scam and all that's happening is that someone has seen D, D travel and TRVL and is literally copying what we're doing literally copying when you look at their website yeah you look at their white paper yeah it's literally a copy they basically copied D travel And when you look at their roadmap, it's all bullshit. Partnerships. Well, we already have partnerships with the graph. We already have partnerships with Matic. We're going to have a major partnership with an AR, AI, uh, with, the, with the biggest AI project out there. And here, look, roadmap, nine partnerships. Like, what the fuck? Uh, testing AI on... They've just literally copied D-Travel. Literally. Literally copied D-Travel created the bullshit website and they're going to pump this to the moon okay and they have nothing literally have nothing. it's just it's not even an idea it's not even an original idea because they're just copying uh and so we need to shit we need to shut this out we need to we need to destroy this we need to we need to make sure that these people can't succeed uh, maybe they may be in, in some bizarre way it's going to benefit us i don't know yeah because it's going to bring attention to trvl uh but it's actually going to be pretty depressing if suddenly they launch their token and they're doing more trading volume and they have much higher market cap than trvl it's going to be quite depressing okay and i think what well, i think we're at kind of the precipice of exploding and we have to make that happen. You know, as a bull, we have to make that happen. Right. 
So I'm not saying people to market buy. I'm not suggesting that. But I do think that if you're bullish, you want to see a bullish chart. Yeah, you want to see bullish absorption. You want to see support lines defended, aggressively defended. And you want to see higher lows and higher highs on the higher time frame. And we want to see uh, historic levels obliterated. That's what we want to see. As a bull, we want to see that. And even though I don't think it's a bad idea for people to take profit, uh, and I don't mind that we have increasing volume when the price goes up, I do think at some point people need to kind of hold fire on the taking profit um, when we're trying to take significant levels, you know, like we could have taken that level by now. Yeah. If we didn't have such an aggressive profit take here, we could have hit that level and taken that high. That would have been your higher high. And this move down would have been the higher low for change of market structure. So we haven't had that yet. The reason why we haven't had that yet is because we have a lot of uh, trigger happy uh, take profits uh, prevented that high being taken. Yeah. And we're not in the luxury of a situation where we can squeeze up because we're not on derivatives perpetuals or futures or anything like that okay so if we had that luxury then i wouldn't be bothered because it would be easy to squeeze up you'd have a lot of shorts that have built that built up above those highs we don't have that luxury and so therefore if everyone gets on board the idea of making bullish market structure then it just means wait for the high to be taken before you take a profit don't preempt the high uh, and take profit before because we need higher highs and higher lows higher highs and higher lows we can keep this going all the way to the end of the bull market if we keep on making higher highs and higher lows but we need to make higher highs so it's going to be difficult if uh if we uh and it just shows you that people aren't bullish yeah and and i think a lot of people who are involved in trvl now are bullish and therefore what do you want to see? Well, I want to see highs taken, all of them, all the way up to that one. I want to see all of them taken. And once you take that high and we take that weekly high up there. Okay, take profit. Then let's make a higher low. And let's keep on going. Higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows. And just get everyone into that groove. And trust me when I say this uh we will see the rocket we will go to outer space and we will see the moon okay once you if this bullish market structure begins and continues then the whole of crypto is going to get behind us okay in this in this endeavor in this in this adventure all right uh and so that's basically my two cents on trvl <laughs> and prove me wrong uh i hope uh, i'm not suggesting that people risk their fortunes on this um, none of this is financial advice it's all entertainment value only but i think that's a bullish candle uh, and we'll see by the end of this week how amazing would it be if by the end of this week and i, I think obviously bitcoin has everything to do with a lot of things so i'm not suggesting otherwise but how amazing would it be if this candle now which looks pretty miserable actually ends up with uh, uh like a really bullish explosive engulfing candle imagine if we can engulf this previous week yeah and close higher than that week and maybe even you know like we can just engulf that candle how amazing would that be if we can engulf that previous candle how bullish would that look if we could close this week all the way up back at nine cents yeah this whole thing would then suddenly start looking extremely bullish why because the price is right back at nine cents again no one's expecting that okay no one's expecting that. And how bullish would that be? I'm not suggesting we uh, manipulate the market, but it's just about sentiment, isn't it? All right. Hopefully Bitcoin will explode and then <laughs> and then the work will be partly done for us. OK, I can see right now that we're trying to hold a higher low. Right. On Bybit, it looks like a higher low is trying to hold. I know that on KuCoin we took the previous low but we haven't taken the actual low that matters and again on the gate we it looks like we held a higher low and on mex again it's the same as kucoin 
we took the previous low but we haven't actually taken the low that matters now when i done did my original analysis my suggestion based on fib time on higher time frame fib time was that from the original launch to this pivot to this pivot based on fib time the all-time low was put in on the 618 based on fib time yeah that's a ratio and then on the one-to-one -one was where we put in that um that that low that at the moment that's our higher low yeah so the one-to-one -one based on fib time was put in on fib time yeah that's a major fib time pivot i'm on it I'm, I'm, i mean it's really close but i'm still not expecting that low to be taken and i'm hoping it doesn't because then this fib time is going to be very um it's going to look really good because then we know then we know that this is following fib time it, this chart is going to look really balanced and really uh, start to take shape nicely then we can, then we can look for the next fib time and then the next fib time and we can just keep this going really maybe this is just going to continue all right so i'm not expecting it to be taken but you know like we're very close and so right now it's all about uh, bullish sentiment yeah if people are bullish they're going to be buying yeah, they're going to be buying and buying and buying and holding the price and making sure that low isn't taken and as long as that low isn't taken here um that's our higher low intact uh, and the question obviously is bitcoin but then after we if we can defend that low and we can hold that low then as soon as bitcoin starts to go back up uh hopefully then we can go up and that, and our destination our aim is to take out that high we need to take out that high this is i mean if we were able to create this idea then this is looking like a really nice inverse head and shoulders pattern on the highest time frame yeah and right now i know people are looking at this and they're thinking to themselves it actually looks like a head and shoulders pattern on the daily time frame yeah so you have two ideas forming in people's mind you have a bearish idea on the daily time frame even though we haven't taken the low yet okay and then in my mind i'm also thinking no we we have an inverse head and shoulders forming on the higher time frame uh, and obviously the key will be a breakout with volume and that's what we would need to see to complete this pattern you would need to see a breakout there would need to be an injection of volume and uh and then you would know that this is this is correct yeah volume is really important when it comes to breaking um key levels yeah if you see a break with volume then you know that level has been broken okay and as you can see now on this weekly time frame we're seeing a, a decrease in volume on max uh I think on buy buy bit is the one that's holding up the price because we're seeing you see on gate there's a deep there's been a decrease in volume in this descent uh you see on kucoin there's been a descent that has been with decrease in volume and actually right now on buy bit is the one that's holding the price because we're seeing volume and we're, we're seeing the price held up and so on the other three exchanges we're seeing a, a less selling and then actually the selling has been on buy bit okay luckily there's also been aggressive buying yeah but if we didn't see the buying this aggressive selling could have led us to much lower prices and so luckily Bybit is holding the price but that doesn't mean that this can't end if the buying stops and so naturally I'm hoping that the bulls will start to um, see what's happening all right that's my TRVL update of course everything has to do with bitcoin like i can't i can't you can't ignore bitcoin and that's the problem here um so um as long as bitcoin 